Alrighty, hello everyone. You know, I remember a few years ago, the very first guy on YouTube to start a men's fitness channel, a guy by the name of Scooby, uh, he made a comment that would seem almost unbelievable today. He said that in 2005, right before he started his YouTube channel, he said that what inspired him to start posting fitness videos to the internet was because when he went on Google and typed in how to get in shape for men, he said that not a single result came up on Google. And that was in 2005. Like, if it was 1995, you'd think, oh, well, that would make sense. But you'd think by 2005, there surely would have been a lot more, you know, there had to, be a, there had to have been something, right? But um, he said there was pretty much nothing when he went looking for, you know, information for guys on how to get in shape. But you see, as someone who went to high school in the early 2000s, who, well, graduated the year before, 2004, uh, this doesn't actually seem crazy to me at all, because I remember, like, pre-2005, uh, barely anyone lifted weights. It was really only, like, a really niche thing that, uh, you know, a few kind of hidden communities were into. And, of course, there were gyms around, but, you know, only about maybe one in 50 guys that you saw on the street did any sort of like noticeable hypertrophy training for the end goal of just to gain muscle. You know, they were usually some sort of existing athlete or, you know, maybe a celebrity, you know, celebrities lifted to look good. And maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit. Like, you know, my uncle had a weight set, but it suffice to say that uh, going to the gym for guys uh, exploded in popularity between 2005 and I'd say about 2015 is when it sort of reached what it is today. During that 10-year period, uh, there was just a huge cultural shift that seems to have, you know, <laughs> driven guys to the gym. And yeah, I think it's a, a it was a confluence of different factors. There was YouTube, that was one factor. There was Twilight was another factor. I remember uh, Twilight, as I mentioned in my last video, that drew a lot of guys to the gym. And um, another thing that I hadn't thought about before, but dating apps, you know, <laughs> the um, the dating market inflation for men. And yeah, 20, 25 years ago, that was just totally not the case. But, um, you know, I went through a period between 2000, uh, 2010 and 2014 where I myself, uh, you know, got into lifting and, uh, you know, had a bodybuilding split, bro. You know, I was, um, had my routine, I had my push-pull routine. And I spent some time on, like, you know, different forums. They called the MISCs back then, and I got into it a little bit. But I, I started to realize something by 2015, which I want to talk about in today's video. So, first of all, uh, you should work out okay, you should do some form of exercise. Now, I'm not talking about like a bodybuilding split, okay, I'm not talking about going to the gym per se. Uh, I think that everyone, or almost everybody, should do some form of exercise, okay, even just going for a walk. Like, you know, even when I was like a total doomer, I still used to go for night walks every night, and to this day, I, I go hiking and whatnot, and uh, I encourage people to do some form of exercise. So let me start off by saying that, kind of as a disclaimer, all right? Uh, however, however, when I was, um, you know, heavily involved in fitness and everything, and I was on these bodybuilding forums and, and you know, just into the whole memes of lifting, uh, I remember there were guys that were, like, really obsessed with lifting. Like, for them, it wasn't about getting girls. It wasn't about doing it for their health. The end game was to have a great physique, right? And a lot of these guys had something that's colloquially known as bigorexia. Uh, anyway, so what made me realize how far gone a lot of guys had become, especially in like the online fitness community, was there was a poll that was done, okay? It was a kind of like a large-scale poll that had thousands of participants that was all across bodybuilding.com. And it was quite a famous poll, like there were news articles that were written about its results where, I don't remember the words verbatim, but I'll, I'll give you the gist of it, all right. Uh, they asked the participants of this poll 
Would you rather have the physique that you have now and live to a natural life expectancy, or would you rather have the physique of your dreams? You know, you can design your physique any way you want, but you only have 10 years to live with the perfect physique. And about 50%, maybe 60% of the participants chose the perfect physique that they only get to enjoy for 10 years, and that's the rest of their life. And it made me realize like how far gone and how much these guys have missed the whole point in exercising. You see, this video that I'm making now, this is actually a kind of addendum to my last video about mogging. Okay, I was going to include this point in it, then I decided that I'll do its own separate video. Because uh, you know how people would say to you growing up, they would say, high school doesn't matter. Okay, don't worry about what goes on in high school. It's a very, very small part of your life, which is the truth, right? Like by the time you're 30, 35 years old, what happened in high school means nothing, right? Like 10 years after high school, everything is put into perspective as being as trivial as what it really is. But what I think a lot of people miss, what a lot of people don't understand, is the same is true for your 20s and 30s, okay? Yes, they're important. But there's a lot of guys that are obsessed in their 20s with having a gym physique, right? Like, you know, I've only got a certain period of time before my muscles, my ability to gain muscle begins to decline with, you know, reducing testosterone over a certain age. So I have to work out really hard now to get the perfect physique. And what they don't sort of realize is that, you know, they go hard throughout their 20s and wasting all of this time that can never be got, gotten back. You know, people talk about playing video games and how much of a waste of time video games are. Well, for a lot of these guys, their physique is their video game. You know, they spend hours and hours uh, leveling up their character, which is their physical character. But psychologically and in practicality, it's no different to video games. You know, they're spending hours and hours every week uh, doing something that has little to no uh, real life material kind of reward or spiritual reward or anything really. It's, a, it's as useless as playing video games. But anyway, uh, what tends to happen is a lot of these guys go really hard in their 20s and they focus all this time and energy onto a kind of aesthetic ideal and they get all wrapped up in the kind of bodybuilding gym rat lifestyle. And all it ends up doing is increasing their SMV by like a point or two. And while it is true that heavy weightlifting does have some minor health benefits, although most of them are overstated by gym bros, uh, what tends to happen is very few of the guys you see at the gym have the self-discipline to not cheat on their final rep, to never get sloppy, to never, you know, do shortcuts on their exercises. And ultimately, what ends up happening is that most of these hardcore lifters that you see at the gym, they have a whole boatload of aches and pains by the time they turn, you know, 45, 50 years old. Uh, but the thing is, right, like, you might want to go traveling when you're 45 years old. You know, there's so much stuff that you might want to do as you get older that you're not going to be able to do if you have a lower back injury. I'm nearly 40 and I can still sprint. You know, I can still go hiking. I can still, you know, I'm still able-bodied 100%. I don't have any aches and pains. And yeah, the reason why is because after I finished high school, like I was tall and skinny in high school, right? And as I got older, I put on like a little bit of, you know, a little bit of weight, right? A little bit of fat. But when it got too much, I just dieted it off, you know? I just did more walking and I, I've just stayed lean. And I... I don't have any injuries. I don't have any aches and pains. You know, I'm still, I basically feel the way I did when I finished high school. Whereas most of these gym bros, they eventually will tear their bicep, they'll tear their pecs, they'll herniate a disc, or they'll, you know, they'll, they'll do damage to their rotator cuff because of you know, muscle imbalances. Their knees start to get a lot of aches and pains. And because they're so focused on you know, getting bigger and stronger, they just push through it. 
and end up doing permanent knee damage. It's it's cooked, <laughs> you know, it's messed up, and it doesn't really. They just they get less out of it than what they put in. And again, I I have to keep saying this. Okay, uh, if you want to get in better shape, then you should do so. Okay, like I said, most people should do some form of exercise and. If you want to gain some muscle, you are going to have to focus on getting stronger because uh, muscle gains, hypertrophy gains, uh, they're usually downstream from strength gains. So if you want to get bigger, it is true that you've got to focus on getting stronger. What I'm basically saying is don't become obsessed with it. You will eventually get injured and it'll all be for nothing because, you know, muscle gains, they come and go. You know, age is the great equalizer when it comes to looks, okay? Uh, All you'll get out of it is a bunch of injuries and a bunch of old man muscle that doesn't really appeal to anyone. So, uh, in conclusion of this video, what are my concluding thoughts here? My early 20s were by far my most successful time when it came to getting girls, right? Like, you know, a girl every other week. And I was totally untrained, like absolutely no muscle at all. Like I'm over six feet tall and I I only weigh right now about 75 kilograms. I think I weighed about 68, 70 back then. You know, I was totally, you know, just had no muscle at all. I was just this like six foot noodle. And look, maybe the girls that I did get with would have found me a little bit more attractive if I did have some muscle and You know, when I think back to the times that I did get rejected, because, you know, you're going to get rejected a lot, right, when you're always hitting on girls, you know, uh, did I miss out on one or two because of my frame? Yeah, probably. And when I was gym maxing, I actually did get compliments from the girls that I was with. You know, I remember one girl we met on, I think the website is debunked now, or maybe it still exists. I don't know. It was called tagged.com. And it was like, uh, this was way back in the day. This is like 2010. And we were walking back to my apartment. This was in like the middle of the day. And um, she she sort of had her hand around my waist. And she's like, man, you've got like nice abs, you know, because <laughs> I wasn't big, but I'd, you know, got like a, a skinny guy six pack and, you know, toned up my arms. Um, and, you know, she complimented me. Um, and if I could go back in time, I would actually do X like weight training from high school onwards, and I would be more consistent with it. But it would no, it'd be no more than two to three times per week. In fact, let me give you my, my official prescriptive advice, okay? I'm going to give you specific advice in this video. Uh, if you want to lift weights, okay, if that's something that you're into, just focus on getting your noob gains, okay? Your noob gains are the gains that you get in like the first six months. Like, in my opinion, Zac Efron looked a million times better in the original Bad Neighbors movie than he did uh, a couple of years later when he clearly had hopped on, I don't want to say it on YouTube, we'll say he was taking vitamin S, we'll we'll put it that way, okay? Uh, He's clearly on vitamin S in more recent times. I know he's filming movies that require him to do so, but yeah, I don't know, man, it just doesn't look good. Um, he looked so much better. Go back and watch the the first Bad Neighbors movie where him and, what's his face, Seth Rogen, uh, they're standing outside of an Abercrombie and Fitch and uh, Seth Rogen is complimenting Zac Efron on how good he looks. Because he does, he looks good. Zac Efron looked better with his noob gains than he did in later movies where uh, he's all maxed out. You know, you can tell he's definitely taken something. Not because he's necessarily all that big. Um, A lot of guys, they can't tell when a guy has taken something. They're like, oh, bro, his physique could easily be achieved naturally. It's like, yeah, maybe it could be. Maybe other guys could get that big naturally. But he's not, (laughs) you know, he's not natural. Anyway, once you've maxed out your noob gains, okay, once you've been working out for about five to six months, right, once you've gained that initial, you know, burst of muscle, Um, 98% of the bump in SMV that you're going to get has already been achieved in that time period. Like, yeah, working out is going to make you more attractive. But once you've toned up your muscles and got a flat stomach, um, you're barely going to get any more attention. 
than if you spend three years obsessively fine tweaking your your bodybuilding split to get that extra 40% of gains that you get once your noob gains are maxed out. Like <laughs> the, you, you barely get any bump up in SMV at that point. So there's just no point. There's just no point. And it's not good for your health. So why do it? 